All right, any sound now? Let's see if that changes anything. Can you hear anything now, anybody? If you can hear anything, just comment, let me know. Oh, it is working. Hmm. Okay. I switched my microphone over to a different. I wonder if the microphone went out in my main camera. So I'm going to have to look into that. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. That was my voice, not the camera. Um, so I'll look into that. Um, it, I'll do my best to project my sound, but if my voice sounds a little bit different today, that one, this one is a little off center. So it's not going to be right in front of me. So I'll do my best. So if anyone has trouble hearing, I guess not ideal hearing is still better than nothing. So I'm going to switch. Mm, can I? I'm going to switch back just one more time and troubleshoot, and let's see if it still defaults to bad. So tell me if it goes silent now. All right, well, now I know something is wrong with that camera, so I might need to get that replaced, but at least we've got it on this one. So I switched back over so everyone should be able to hear again. Let's make sure that it's working. Technology is so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw Leah just messaged me and said maybe the mic is out, and I think we can confirm that because I went back and it went away, but. I'm just waiting for confirmation there. I see someone, Teresa said that it's back. Okay, so it's working. So I will use this microphone. So um, let me know if you're having any trouble hearing today. I promise I will do my best to kind of point my voice over this direction. Um, not quite as ideal. And then we'll get that fixed before I have another live again. So um, yeah, all right. So now that we've gone through that fun, um, sorting out technology. Let's go ahead and catch up on what I was trying to say at the beginning that you couldn't hear me. Um, welcome today um, to a fun live. We're gonna mix and match a couple of things from this most recent re release. And then I've got something from an older release that looks like it's gonna kind of play fun together. Um, I haven't tested it out, so we'll just play with it here together. Um, but really quickly, a couple things just before we get started. Um, I have linked everything that I thought of that I'm going to use, you know how that goes, sometimes those things change, um, down in the video description. Um, there might be a couple things off because I was scrambling, YouTube was giving me errors this morning, which also made me go, hmm, what's going on here, um, when the sound wasn't working. So I got a little bit behind, um, but I've got everything that I'm planning on using for sure linked in the video description. So if you have any questions, you can check that out. Um, feel free to ask as well. Sometimes I don't see all those comments, especially once I start creating, but the Pink First Studio name where you see that is Leah is behind the scenes there, and she does a great job of catching anything I miss, um, or sometimes she answers before I even have a chance to get the words out. So whenever you see that Pink First Studio name, that is Leah behind the scenes. Um, so thank you, Leah, for moderating. We take turns doing that for each other. Um, if we both miss it for some reason, just leave that comment or question again, and we'll get back to you. I promise we're not ignoring you. Just every now and then things can move really fast and we might miss something. Um, one of the other fun things that Leah gets to do is pick a winner at the end of the live for a $15 gift card. And the way you enter for that is um, just what you're doing in the chat already. Leave lots of comments, ask those questions, chat with each other, just have a good time. Um, I don't know. I know we're all virtual, but it feels like we're all kind of hopping in a craft room together to chat and have fun time. Um, another way that you can get an entry uh, to win that $15 gift card is by sharing this video. Um, the way you do that is you grab that little, there's a, if you're on a computer, there's a share button. I'm not sure where it is on the phone, but grab that link and send it to a friend via text or a message or post it on your own social media. 
If you're part of a crafty group and you know it's allowed, feel free to post it there. Um, and then come back and leave a comment like Teresa just did, letting us know you shared, and that counts as an extra entry. And then one final thing that we really appreciate, it doesn't count as an entry, but it helps us out is if you're enjoying, if you hit that lovely little thumbs up button underneath the video, um, that just helps our reach, helps more people find uh, the video and helps us have a little bit more uh, friends to join us and have all the fun with us that we have. And I think that covers everything. Oh, let me turn that off. I'm gonna turn my hot foil machine back on. So I, can hear. I meant to do it right when the live started and then I got all flustered with the sound not working. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip my camera around to the one that doesn't have sound. And I'm gonna make sure the sound stays where it needs to. Oh goodness. Okay, it looked like it was gonna freeze up there for a minute, but okay, good. Looks like it's working. Let's just confirm that the sound is still there and everything's successful. And Leah just mentioned something else. Um, today, we only sent out emails to those that had concerned, confirmed that they wanted to receive the live emails. It's been on the live emails for a while and we're just trying to kind of update things so that People who aren't interested in that don't just get extra emails um, throughout the day. So if you didn't get that email and you hop in here, just know that, or if you come back and watch it on replay, just know that um, go back to an old email and you can click that link and sign up. All right. Looks like we're good. No one's saying they can't hear me. Good. Laura Rumble, thank you for confirming that, that it still sounds okay. All right. So today we're going to use the pretty summer blooms. It's a stencil and die set. There's no coordinating stamp or hot foil or anything, just to make it simple. And then we're going to use the terrarium die. Both of those are from our most recent release. The terrarium die, um, especially, was made to coordinate with the magic is in you. But it's really fun with um, all the summer blooms images as well. And then um, right here, the arch backdrop. This is an uh, older release. But I noticed the shape kind of looked like, let me see if it works. Looks like I could get a couple of the arches if I hot foil them and then die cut them out with this terrarium, um, kind of get a fun border around the edges. So we're going to give that a try because why not? So I think my hot foil plate's getting pretty close to heated up. I'm going to move some stuff out of the way here and pull this out and start getting things um, situated here. I'll just put this on here for now. Um, I had this all heated up, but I turned it off so it didn't auto shut off. So it might take just a minute or two for it to get back to temperature. That sounds funny. I'm gonna adjust my laptop out of the way so I have as much desk space as I can get. And then, kind of, actually, you know what? Hold on. We're not going to pull that out front yet. We need to get our hot pillow ready. And I'm going to use, I'm still kind of loving the that metallic variety pack of uh, hot oil. So I'm just going to use a little more um, this champagne, kind of a light cold tone. I think that's going to be a fun color for this. So we're going to cut off a piece of oil and get ready to oil it. And I'm pretty sure I just want to use the the regular one. I might do the solid hot oil. Now I'm trying to decide because we got a little behind with the sound issues. So I might skip doing um, the reverse foil right now just to save some time. Ah, there we go. The light just came on, so the platform is ready. So we're going to hit the timer and get ready. But yeah, we might um, might speed up a little bit just to catch up for the little bit of time delay that we had. Uh, Allison, I'm glad. I. Um, I really love these and they're so, one of my favorite ways to use these is just hot boiling and then using some of our beautiful washi sweets. It works really well just to embellish and then put your sentiment in the middle. It's a great fast way um, to embellish it. On um, bow, yes, the terrarium dice, super duper fun. Teresa, yes, as a snow globe, I, I think we need a, a wintry Christmas set or actually if we take any of our 
wintry Christmas and just turn it into a snow globe. It's really fun, the terrarium die to make shaker cards. We've had a few people um, do that. But yes, like Leah said, we're finally getting warm weather in Washington too. So bring on the summery cards for sure. I'm, I'm definitely all over that. All right, that's, there it goes. I figured that timer was just about to start. I'm gonna move this slightly out of the way. Move that out of the way. And let's pop this foil onto that foil plate. Oh, and I forgot to just get my machine there. I noticed I waited too long and my foil started curling, but we'll see how it goes. If it curled too much, I'll just redo. You know that sometimes those satin foils can get a little curly. All right, let's get it through here and let's see. I jostled it around too much and we have overfoiling. Just read it. Plug that back in in case we need it. All right, moment of truth. How did we do? You know what? We got really lucky and it worked perfectly. Love when that happens. All right, so we will turn this off and I'll solid hot foil this piece um, later after the live and use it for something else. Um, but for now, we're just going to cut loose, unplug this, and clear a little space on the desk. Scraps of the uh, mirror cardstock under there. Oops. Limited desk space, so I have to move all those out of the way. All right, then let's see. Here before we go any further, let's see how this terrarium die. If it'll fit on here like I'm kind of wanting and hoping it will. Looks like it's gonna work really well. That's centered. I might run a little bit of the foil up there, but we'll take a chance on it. Just gonna go die cut this off camera and see how it works. Are we ready to see? It worked. Oh, I love it. That came out great. And that didn't be, oh, well, my tape really ripped that. So I kind of ruined this piece. I could probably put something cute over the top and trim it down. So I'll save that. I might still make use of it, but my initial purpose has kind of been served. So that's okay. All right. And then let's go ahead and die cut one of these scraps of the, some of the matte finish mirror card sock. Let's go ahead and get the bottom of this die button trim down so that we can have that all ready to go as well. We don't waste a bunch. And I will die cut this real quick as well and be right back. I love that the shape on this worked so perfectly. I actually was um, just, someone might've already asked, um, the nested arches. I actually started off trying that one because I thought, oh, maybe that would work on it. That is the wrong shape. I did test that one out and it did not work. Um, so I can save you some time in, in that question on that. But then I, as I was coming through, I went, oh, let's just see if this one does. And I'm super happy to find out that it did. All right, so we've got this already. Let's go ahead and get our summer blooms all ready to go. And then we can start putting together a card. One other thing I don't have ready is a card base. That's, I ran out of time this morning um, to get that ready. So we'll have to figure out a card base when we get to that point. But for now, go ahead and pull these out. And then one other thing I'm gonna do today that I haven't done yet, I always just keep down, but I'm gonna attempt just because a lot of people really love the trick where you stencil just by using the bottom corner of your misty. 
So I'm going to give that a go today and see how I like it. So instead of taping it down, I'm just always going to make sure my stencil is lined up in that bottom corner of my misty. I'm going to grab an ink stand and my ink cups and of course my blending brushes. I'm going to pull out these little ones and put these to good use. Microfiber cloth. All right, this one's a pretty easy one because there's not a lot on this layer other than the flowers. So we make sure everything's down in that bottom corner. Just gonna go for a bright pop of pink. And I'm using sparkling rose for this one. And I do have all the ink colors listed below. So unless I make a wild change on my mind on those, then those should be staying the same. A quick little wipe those down. That ink out of the way and let's pull off that first stencil. That was remarkably nice and easy. I think I can get behind this method. And then we'll put our next one over the top here. And this one is going to be, I like to refer to the back of the packaging, it's going to be the sunshine and then the middle of that flower. So let me do a couple of colors on this one. I'm going to use sweet mustard for the sunshine, mostly. I'm going to do that in that sweet mustard. We'll run that around and get a good pop of color on there. Then I am going to also have that sweet mustard for apricot. And we're going to use a little bit of apricot for the center of the flower there. Just I think that orange will show up better on there. And then I'm also going to add a hint of apricot just to that bottom edge of the sunshine. I just want to add a little bit of a shadow effect, if that makes sense. Just a hint, nothing crazy. Let's pull the stencil off. I love that, that little bit of just interest on the sunshine there. Great. Next layer is going to add in some leaves and some plants. Building this up. Probably going to use a couple different colors for this layer as well. I'm going to do the clouds in ocean breeze. There. And I'm going to just keep these as a hint of color. I just want, I'm not even sure if I'm going to use the clouds. We'll see. I'm, I'll probably use some of them, but I don't know for sure what I'll use on this. So I'm going to keep them nice and soft. Just checking comments. Welcome, Stacey. I just happened to see, and I think I did forget to mention if you're new here, we always really love if you leave a little comment. And let us know that this is your first time watching. I don't always catch them when I'm crafting to say hello, but I love to when I can. Great. I'm also going to do ocean breeze on here, but I am going to come in with a little bit of deeper tone as well, just to add some variation to those leaves. But we'll start with ocean breeze for our base layer because I think that will be a good start for those. All right, getting close there. Oops, slash too hard on those, or you might uh, feel them a little. Great, and then we'll switch out to aquamarine. I'm going to switch to my deeper brush for that color, instead of lights and darts. And then this one, we're just going to use this 
at the base of the leaves here. I'm using the edge of my stencil as kind of a placeholder there. I hope you can kind of see that little bit of added tone and color. It's just adding to the center of those leaves and where that stem is. I'm going to do the same here on these. Again, only the leaves, not worrying about the clouds because I want to keep those nice and soft and pretty. Okay, and I think that'll do it. Okay. We're good on that. So let's clean that off. Move on to the next easel. It's really do go nice and quick this way. And see how soft and pretty those clouds are. Okay, line this up. Down in that corner there, which is perfect. And for this one, we're going to use a few different colors again. Because first of all, we've got the sunshine there. So we need to do that in some apricot, which we need to get the outside. I am. I could probably get away without, but just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and just mask off those flowers that are close there, just so that I don't have to be quite as careful. And then this, I'm going to go nice and bold to kind of hit that, not too bold, I'm not going to like black crazy amounts of ink in there, but those are pretty small little openings and <clears throat> I want to make sure that that orange shows up a little bit there. Okay. And we'll switch out there. We'll move those masks over on top of the sunshine, of course. We don't get anything down there. And then let's, let's grab some meadow and add some greens on here. Let's start here on these. Let's get some of these. We'll do these. I'm going to do this on all of them. I might add a little bit of Emerald City on here as well for <clears throat> depth and shadow. I'm going to get a layer of this on all the way first before I build that. Just kind of get that up a little bit. Sometimes if you do that, I can see I just a little rough on this. I'm going to bend that little piece back down. These stencils are so sturdy and stable that it's pretty easy to do that. So, might as well take advantage. And then it's holding down into this much better. Some of those little intricate leaf bits, you kind of gotta, gotta watch them so you can make sure that you get things where you want it. All right, and I'm not masking here, but I am going to switch over. Um, a different tone there. I'm going to use some that same aquamarine here again on the part that layers over those leaf things. I'm not really worried. These are similar tones, so I don't feel like I have to keep things separate. If a little bit blends into one of the other leaves, oh well. I'll just add some different effects there. And then we're going to tip it over. And we are going to do just a little additional green extra color at the base, kind of like we did with the apple one, so that we can kind of hit the base of those leaves and just add a little bit of depth and interest there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like my voice wants to go all croaky today. And then just do a little bit at the base of each of those. Our base kind of the center. Why not? All right, I think that'll do it. And I think this is our last stencil layer too, if I'm correct. Fortunately, this part went pretty quick. Okay, masking tape off and the final reveal here of that last stencil. Look at how pretty that is. Okay, and don't worry about the ink over the side. That's all going to be die cut off. Move the misty out of the way. That was um, truly my first time using the misty for stenciling, and I really am kind of surprised by how much I liked it. So, if you're just stenciling first and not um, stamping, 
then I, I, not that I doubt it because I know a lot of people do it and really love it, but it's very easy. Or by my blending brushes and my brushes. And then let's pull out the coordinating guide for this and go ahead and line this up and get it taped down and then I cut that out. I'm going to take my time because again, this is our amazing little one piece guy. So my best advice here is to take your time and line it up. And I really like to focus on two different corners. So that sunshine and then this greenery down here are perfect reference points. So I highly, highly recommend taking your time getting them lined up and really go for those opposite corners. If you just start up in this corner and then try and line it up, it's a lot harder. And I tip it up so I can look straight on and make sure it all looks good. And then we'll go die cut. I'll be right back. Check this out. Pop all these lovely little pictures. Take the guy off and then make it really easy to pop all those little pieces out there. Some little chads to poke out there, I see. And actually, you know what? My plates are getting pretty warped. Oops, that actually won't matter. I almost needed a shim on that because this is a pretty good guy and I really do need to. Um, yeah, you know what? I didn't feel cut through some of those. So we might just. Get out the ones that are good and then pop it back through with the missing ones. So, kind of wondering. I know I need to flip my plates over. I just hadn't hadn't gotten around to it yet. So, that just became high on the to do list, priority wise. Most of those are getting out. Not that one. Goodness, now my plates are worked pretty bad. All right, let's just line this up and re die cut those. The great thing is, is if you just kind of slide them around until they kind of nest into the grooves there, you can kind of get them just tucked into the right spot. And then really carefully take them down really well. Doesn't move. And then we'll re die cut them. I'll be right back. Usually when I die cut something like this, I kind of flip it over, then I can see that, oh yes, it did cut all the way through before I pull it off. But notice how perfectly that all lined back up and everything's so much better. So just work plate. So if ever something's not cutting, I mean, these have had a lot of love. And if you look at them, they're getting they're getting pretty beat up. So any wider, bigger die is a problem. Um, if mean, anything's wrong with the diet, it probably means something's wrong with your plates, but fortunately, it's very easy to fix. All right, let me grab this and we'll poke some of those little missing um, chads out of there. Those little extra pieces. Not too many, but they're the little things that add all the fun detail to these flowers and leaves that you don't get if you fussy cut, but you only get with coordinating guys like this and cut those little intricate spots out. Okay, there we go. Yes, Susie, this was in last year's Great Connect event. That is correct. All right, oh, I love those happy summery colors. These are really fun. Okay, where, oh, there, find all my different little pieces. So I can kind of group them, um, all the flowers together. And then the same colored leaves, and then we'll pull back over this little bit and start planning how we want to tuck these around and build our little summary snow globe. And then I also need to get a card base to tuck this onto, so I'll work on that as well. Okay. Just a little cloud or two here. Maybe a little one. Partly cloudy day, right? 
let's just kind of play with our arrangement and see what we're gonna do. I'm gonna hide those um, little frames around there. So I'm trying to kind of plan this so that I can get a little bit of all the fun there. Ooh, actually, like, so we probably won't use everything on here, but that's okay. We're, we have that flexibility here. Kind of wiggling things around in the way I like. Definitely lots of those little pink flowers at the bottom make a little, little bouquet down there. One more that came up there. What do you think? I'm kind of liking that. That little flower just coming up the edge there. Do we want to use one of these as well? That's the next question. I actually kind of do like that. So I think that works. It's a fun little, like a little garden burst at the bottom. And the only thing we didn't use, if we do it this way, is quite literally one of the clouds. And I'm sure we could tuck it on there if we wanted, but I kind of, I don't know, kind of liking it even the way it is there. So we'll swap out that cloud. I don't know. Fit them on there, but I almost like it without. All right. So we kind of have a plan now. A lot of times when I do this, Myself, I grab my phone and I take a photo of how I had it so I remember um, what I wanted to do. I'm not going to do that this time. We're just going to kind of redo it and go for it. So we'll see how it goes. Just pull out my foam tape. I want this bottom piece because I want to kind of tuck all those on and then put this, this foam over them. So let's just slide up all this kind of off for now and all that up there. It's going to kind of go in. I'm going to use just probably liquid glue for the bottom, but I'm going to pop the sun and the clouds up at the top up with foam adhesive. Just because I think that extra dimension is going to be fun. That one. More on there. Then I'm going to have to pick a card base for this. So we'll get to that. I really love these up on foam adhesive. I feel like that's adding so much to foam on the bottom of that one. I look at it. That's so much dimension there. When do we want the bigger call? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. We'll overlap that one on the oops. This one. These are my little foam scraps. Which works as long as I can get the backing off. Hold it those with my non existent fingernail. All right. That. Right there. And then we only have this little cloud that we just have to decide. I'm leaning towards just leaving it off, but we'll give it, give it some time here and decide what we want to do. And all those little flowers along the bottom. Oh, that liquid glue. This is kind of the fiddly bit when you get a little uh, a little focus on what I'm doing there. So we're just gonna I forgot, kind of put my liquid glue on. So let's kind of zhuzh up the flowers a little bit on them, fluff them up a little. Way easier if you do that before you add glue. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there. Let's do that on the rest of these. Those on there. And we to yep, I'm going to that. 
by leaving those flower edges kind of fluffed up a little bit, that helps kind of add that feeling of dimension without um, having to add a bunch of little teensy tiny pieces of all the pieces on there. Because not about you guys, but I don't want to do that. And I don't know if you guys want to sit and watch me do that. So it's way better if we just skip that endeavor and enjoy this little tricky method to cut stuff on there. Okay. There's that in there. I just need to nestle this one here. Hopefully, this looks like what we worked on when we started. And if not, it'll just be look a little bit different. That's okay. All right, this I think should pop up. Oh, well, let's see. Yeah, I think a little dot of foam would be great for that. And my doorbell just ringing, and I'm the only one home right now. So hopefully, whoever it is kind of figures out that I'm busy for a few minutes. I'm actually wondering if it's um, the thing I rescheduled for today, the pest control stuff. Because so I thought, surely they won't come at the one time that I'm busy. Hold on. I actually, I'm just going to run and check this. I will be right back. I'm going to mute. And be right back. I'm so Okay, I don't have dogs, so I guess this is my um, version of having to go take a minute to uh, do something that I don't know they have to do. It was who I thought it was, so I was able to let them know they could get started and then open up my garage for and everything. So thank you, everybody, for the patience and giving me a moment or two to take care of that. All right, we're almost done here anyway, so I think we're doing doing just fine. And the final one here. Then we just need to get the bottom of the terrarium adhered into place. And I actually might just adhere that. Oh, let's see. I think if I want to pop it on there onto the card base. Let's see if we can get it. If it'll fit on there. Grab some foam strips here. Aim for the top there and see if that'll hold in place where I want it to there. And build that dimension up all the way, right? Okay. And I love how that worked perfectly. The flowers are tucked down into that little opening. It made a perfect little little holder for them. And I'm just confirming that I don't no, no, we're just gonna, gonna save that little cloud for another day. If I could tuck it in somewhere, but I actually like the the odd number of the three. But then it gives me um I don't know, it feels a little more balanced. Although now that I said that I realize I felt like that cloud was a little crooked. So I had to fix that. As I talk about balance, so look at how cute that is. Part of me really is tempted right now to turn this just into a shape card, but I think let's let's check some. Let me see if I have some colors of cardstock that would make a cute card base for this. Right now. Bear with me for a second while I dig down here. So I got this one from Spellbinders. Or I'm also really tempted by the pink. Hmm. I mean, there's always just 
the basic white card base, but I definitely do think it needs some kind of color. I don't know if that is just a little too much. Maybe we need like a little background dye on there or something. I, think, I really think I like this better on the, well, I don't know. It's pretty great on there too. Let's, let's grab a background dye and see. Oh, wait a minute. I have one die cut already. Let's see if this one is a good fit. This is the, uh, hold on, let me look. Floral and diamond tiles. I have that one cut. Let's see how that one works either on the aqua. Mm, I feel like that's a little bit too busy. Same on the pink, either one. Okay, so we won't use that die. Look for another one. Thinking about the dotted or elongated lattice. I think I'm looking. Dotted lattice. I haven't died quite yet. So I feel like the elongated is the right fit for this. So let's dive at one of those. And here's my lovely little. Rack trick. Here, then going around to knock down the um, nests and stuff. So, okay, I will be right back. I'm going to grab a piece of bubble wrap, kind of our fun little trick. Especially since you just saw my. Um, Plates were kind of worked. You put that under your die, and then when you die cut, it helps you get a perfect cut. So I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Let's see if this doesn't work. The next thing that I'm curious about that I might might be tempted to try. But let's see if this works first. And if we like. All right. That's such a lovely job. Cutting out all of your pieces so well. Watch this, how easy all of these just pop out. And sometimes they'll stick to the bubble wrap depending on how intricate they are. All right. And then let's get this popped out of the die cut as well. Just in here. There we go. I'm seeing a little pokier there to get that out. Okay. And then I've got a couple more pieces, but I'll mess with that in a minute. Let's just wait and see. Hopefully, that one is in stock. I'm going to wait. Um, just kind of on a whim, so hopefully Leah's just checking and confirm that this, I don't think there were any of them that were out of stock that I remember, but I didn't specifically look at that one because I didn't really think of it in advance. Let's see what this does to our background. If that softens it a bit, I feel like that might be that might just be enough. And I feel like that the elongated shape is just perfect because it follows the art shape, especially if we pop this up with foam over that. I like it. Okay, we're gonna go for that. Wasn't entirely sure what I think when we were all done, but why oh, you guys were winging it today and Leah said it is in stock too. So I don't get in trouble then for um, showing you guys on this out of stock. Saved by Leah double checking that for us. All right, let's get that glued down and then pop this up with foam. Then all we need is a quick sentiment to put on there. Uh, work on that next. But let's glue this down first. Mm. Leah had to step away for a second too. 
That's okay. I even had to step away for a minute. So. <laughs> Try really hard not to do that. It's pretty rare that um, I kind of forgot that was happening today. I should have looked at the calendar because my daughters just both went out to coffee. And I would have told them to, or one of them at least, to stay home and be the, the extra person there in that moment. But it's okay. Okay. For a second, I was like, did I just do this right side up and blue on the wrong side? Just a few dots of blue in some random places there. Putting it on everything. We're good for time. Looks like we're gonna make it. Well, wait was getting for a minute there. Blue dry just a few seconds. And while we do that, there's like a little blue smudging over. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. It drives me bonkers. But rubbing alcohol on your glass mat does a really good job of getting all of that extra glue on. So makes yeah. that a quick easy fix. And then I'll pull that foam adhesive back out. Let's go ahead and get this covered really well with some foam adhesive as well. Because we want to pop that up on the pumpkin too. Swap those weights for a second. It's gonna hold pretty quick. So, <laughs> Allison, absolutely keeping it real. You know it. You're in a. All about that. All right, ready. Moment of truth here. While we pick the perfect placement, arrange it, and then, then we commit. <laughs> We're down and done. I love. That background, how that fits so perfectly. All right. So now we just need a sentiment. <laughs> and of course, probably some bling because you know we have to do that. So my thought was tuck one of these on there. I quite decided which one. I kind of like the you are wonderful. You could use one of those simpler ones. This is also, I think I like the you are wonderful. And that kind of fits for so many different occasions, whether it's um, a birthday or a thank you, kind of just fits all the things. So grab a scrap of heart sack if I have them, and may as well use them. Put them into place. And set this in detail black to get the detail on there. Hoping that they don't finish out there before I'm done here. Start muffling up all of them. I think it's going to take them a little while. I know. All right, this is a nice, delicate sentiment. So, should have sampled really good in two times. I'm going to go ahead and just get it one last time there. I like to stamp nice and gentle. But then you don't lose the details on that die. Or on that day, on that um, stamp. And then, really quickly, pause there. We'll cloth stamp. Do that in advance and just clean that detail. Yeah. This is all I use for cleaning with my homemade stamp cleaner. And there's enough stamp cleaner residue in there that for a lot of these little ones, I just make sure it's damp and that kind of refreshes the stamp cleaner. So, when I swap that out, I have to start spraying the with her, but I can kind of get away a little bit without for a little while. And then finally, let's get our sentiment for this side plot. Just the things are back in. There's the sentiment. I'm looking at it thinking, I thought this is going to be one I want to die cut a few times. Um, just stack up. It looks like it's a pretty dainty 
Thank you guys. Have a nice day. So let me die cut this and I'll be right back. That's so cute. I really like that on me. I almost like it. You know what? I almost like it up there. Can I put it on the sunny clouds? It works in there, but I, I don't know. I feel like it kind of pops up there a little more. Let's go and get a couple extra of those from the same scrap of cardstock. And then we can stack it up a little to help make that more dimensional. Oh, Deb, I think this is your favorite card. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. I'm, I feel like it's the magic of lives and I don't quite know why. I don't know if it's just because you're boxing, you have to finish, you can't overthink it because you only have an hour. It's like a time frame. <laughs> Last one of those. I think that should be enough three times stacked up. We'll give it a little bit more oomph. And then that awkward moment when you look out the window and make eye contact with the guy going around to do the um, pest control stuff. Trying <laughs> not to. Uh, well, on that real quick, I just happened to look at them like, oh, hello, that's weird. Anyone else ever done that? Yeah, it's usually not anyone else near enough outside my window here to see. So, I had all they have all day, it just cracks me up that it's not like Murphy's Law, that it would totally end up being the one time that you, the one hour out of an eight hour work day that you really didn't want them to come. <laughs> That's okay. We're almost done. All right, stack that up. And then we'll just glue that. Gives that perfect little bit of dimension. I don't know if it shows on here, but it really helps it pop. Just gonna do glue on the sides. So it's gonna kind of float in the middle there. And we're just adhering it there on this where it touches the sun and the clouds. I'm gonna give it that lovely, let me show you kind of how that pops up for dimension and just it really jumps out at you, which is so super duper fun. All right, you know what? I think I'm, I have no idea what I wanna do for bling on this. And I actually don't feel like if it needs it, it really doesn't need much. I think I'm gonna do the crazy thing that we hardly ever do in lives. And I'm just gonna skip it for now. And play with it after because I feel like it's going to take me some fiddling to figure out where and if I want to put it. Like I might put one in the middle of that little flower there. I don't know. I might put a couple on the clouds or one or two up on the sun. But I might, I might actually put that one, which is kind of, um, <laughs> yes, like Leah said, it really is awkward. It's like in a car when you're driving and you happen to look over and you're at a stoplight, and then you have to sit there until the light changes. Yeah, no fun at all. So, all right. So I'm going to call that good. I love all the fun dimension, the texture, those happy summery colors. And I will post later if I do end up adding any bling. But like I said, I'm almost just liking this as it is. It's got enough shine from the foiling and the bottom here that I think it works just fine. So we'll see what happens though. No promises. It's hard to resist the bling. So all right, I'm going to switch the camera around so I can say goodbye. And thank you to everyone for, for joining me. And let me just camera there. All right. We have a minute here for Leah to go and pick a winner. And despite all of our issues with sound and everything, we still managed to finish pretty much on time. So I'm going to call it good. I know I missed a lot of comments trying to zoom through and catch up. And yes, Bo, I actually have used it to make a shape card. I don't think I've made it, 
a shaker yet, but I have seen some of our design team make a shaker and it makes an adorable shaker. Yes, a snow globe shaker. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally fun. So the terrarium is super versatile. It's really fun with the magic is any of the mushroom set, but also the butter, I think it's butterfly garden is another one in this release that works great in that terrarium. So this is the first time I've used the summer blooms in it. And I also really love that. So not to mention the little hot foil frame around it just kind of bumps it up a notch. So all right. Oh, goodness. I see the winner and I know I'm going to do a horrible job of pronouncing your name. Linda Chia. Oh, goodness. Chia Yuan Buscaria. And I'm sure I said that horribly, but congratulations. You won a $15 gift card to make up for my bad pronunciation of your name. Um, email Leah at pinkfirststudio.com to claim that prize. Her name is just L-E-A, no H on the end of it. And give her two to three business days to get back to you. So you can have some fun shopping and maybe pick up some of this release. Again, I apologize for trying to pronounce your name. I probably should have just said Linda and left it at that, but, um, but big congratulations. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us. We will see you back here on Thursday, same time, same place, just different day for Scrapbook Live with Natalie this week. Um, it'll be the first live of June because May is just wrapping up. So Hope to see you then and have a great rest of your week. In the meantime, everybody, bye for now.